it's uh, it's been a while since I've done any tutorials, and frankly, there just hasn't been anything that I felt like talking about. If you know my work, you know that um, I prefer doing tutorials about a process, not a, not necessarily a feature. So, although you learn about the feature by listening to me, you really learn more about some process. And recently, I've been playing with the Final Cut 10. And um, I did a music video with uh, 20 camera angles in it. And um, I used the brand new multicam editor, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. What I won't be showing is the music video footage, um, but I will be showing kind of a typical kind of uh, multi-camera you know, interview type thing. So um, this is designed for somebody who's never really used Final Cut, and you know you have your, your canvas over here, or whatever they call it. You have your... Um, bins over here in your event library. You have your project library down here and this is where your timeline will be and other stuff pops up here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new event, which used to be a project. I will start a new project, which used to be a timeline. I'm going to make some new keyword libraries, which used to be bins. And why all these things are different I still think is stupid. At any rate, let's um, let's get started. So what I'm going to do is in my 2012, um, uh, I don't even know what they call this thing. It's my 2012 stuff. If I click on this, it shows me everything that's that said uh, was worked on in 2012. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to make a new event, and what I'm going to call it is uh, I don't know multi cam, uh, yeah, uh, multi cam test. Okay because uh, we're still making tests. Um, and then in that um, event, I'm going to make a few uh, what they call keyword searches. So if I right click on that and say new keyword collection, I'm going to call it um, my uh, footage. Probably a better word for that. And I'm going to make another one called a uh, new keyword collection called uh, audio. I got to click on that. Whoops. I got a little lonely A up there. Audio. Okay, now when I tab over here to the finder, I do have some uh, sample footage here. I'm going to open this up. And I have a, a, a bunch of uh, B-roll, but what I'm really going to concentrate on is this one bit. And uh, this is a thing of uh, Shane Hurlbit talking about the um, Red Rock Micro uh, stuff that he used on Active Valor, which opened uh, just yesterday or two days ago, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I have four camera angles of Shane sitting down talking about um, the foot uh, the Red Rock Micro stuff and I'm gonna drag that into my footage bin or keyword search now you notice when I did that that event said oh uh, no not 2012 it jumped it down to 2010 now why is that well it's because the footage is a couple years old it was shot in November 2010 and so it thinks it needs to be in 2010 which I think is dumb but whatever and then I also have an audio file and I'm gonna put that in the audio um, searcher thing uh, keyword thing so when I click on the audio bin or keyword library or what do they call it keyword collection I get the audio when I click on the footage I get my footage and when I click on multicam test I get all of it now again we're gonna make a, a, a multicam uh, project and um, the way you do that, the coolest thing about the Final Cut 10 is that it will sync everything for you. Now, each of these cameras has wild audio on it. If I just scrub through this, or excuse me, skim through it. Okay, and then the, this is the one from the audio recorders who actually did a good recording instead of the wild sound that's on the 5Ds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on all this. I'm going to... Uh, what, excuse me, I'm going to lasso all these and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new multicam clip. Now this is where it gets really cool because Final Cut 10, I'm going to call this, um, uh, well he's talking about Red Rock Micro, so I'm going to go Red Rock uh, Micro. And if as long as you have this guy checked on here, use audio for synchronization, it's just magic. Now I'm going to say uh, make the video a comment on the clips, yeah it's all It says it's 720, really? I'm going to check that. Come out here, right click on this. Open with Final Cut 7. No, that's 1080. Okay, so that's probably just some sample thing. 
Sorry, sorry for diverting there. Okay, so as long as I have this use audio for synchronization, this is, uh, I don't even know how long these clips are. It's, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. And uh, I'm going to click OK. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to listen to the audio in the sound file, the WAV file. It's going to listen to the audio in camera A, camera B, camera C, and camera D. And it's going to wiggle, jiggle those around. And then it's going to go, oh, OK, well, here's your new multicam clip. So I'm going to let this think for a little bit. It takes about, I've ti I timed it the other, uh, earlier. It took about 15 or 20 seconds. And of course, now it's taking longer. And then we're done. So now here's my clip. Now, what's scary is the clip is black. Now, we're going to get to that in a second. Now, in order to really work with that clip, I need a timeline or what Final Cut 10 calls a project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to click on New Project. Uh, that's what this little plus sign means. And I'm and in uh, Chris Fenwick land, I always give something a, uh, a, uh, a client name first, so HV for Horobit Visuals. I give it a project name. Uh, red rock micro and I give it a version number so this is version one and uh, ye, I think all this stuff is right I never to be honest with you I never look at it <laughs> so um, and the default event is my multicam test now you notice that thing that was in 2010 is now up here in 2012 because I made the multicam clip so it's like oh you're so so what this little divider here it's not when you made it or when you last worked or yeah it's not when you made it but it's when you last worked on it which i think is a little weird i don't like things rearranging themselves on their own it's just bizarre so i'm going to click okay for my project and it makes me an empty project and now when i take my red rock uh multicam clip and i know it's multicam because it's got that little guy and i bring it down here i'm good to go except for the fact that there's no video which scares the hell out of me because I don't get this. So I've messed with all this before. When I right click on the clip, I get active video angle up here. And you see I have five things. Well, I have camera A, B, C, and D, and of course, the sound file. The reason it's black is it is showing me the video from the sound file. And of course, the sound file has no video. So I get that. Um, and then. The other thing that's kind of weird, it, this has the clip name. Now, if you've ever looked at any of my tutorials, you, you can see that this is the original clip name, and I renamed it with the camera letter, the camera reel, and the date that it was shot. And this is bogus. So I don't know what these mean. So, hmm. Well, before we get to that, let's do some more setup here. So what I want to do here is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to hide my event library because that's because I, I need to have some more space here. And I'm going to show my angle viewer. And you see I have my little tiny program window and my little angle viewer. Now I can take this little guy and scroll this over. And sometimes it doesn't grab. There we go. And now I have my angle viewer and I have my program monitor and all is good. So that's how I'm going to cut my show. Now you notice I had four. I had actually five things. I had four angles and an audio, and here I have a four up, and there's a click here, and there's the fourth angle. I click here for settings. I can see, oh, here's all nine angles. Well, that's dumb, because I want to see these. So we're, these are all little, like, gotchas that we're going to get to. But the biggest gotcha right now is the fact that I don't know what these angles are. I mean, I do know, but the file name is not as cool as, like, having have it say close up or wide shot or side shot or steady cam shot, whatever. So here's the problem. What I want to do is I want to give these clips more information. And if I click on a clip, this is A1, and that's my wide shot, and I come over here to the inspector, I can say, oh, camera name. Oh, well, that sounds interesting. Well, let's call that, um, well, it is camera A, but I just want to call it the wide shot, right? So that's wide. And uh, let's see, B, oh, that's Shane's close-up, so I'm going to call it close-up. And again, this is the inspector info tag. Uh, C was the Steadicam dude. Yeah, so we'll call, come over here. And, and again, you he would have video, audio, and info. And then we're going to call this the uh, Steadicam. And uh, number four was this profile. I'm just going to call it side because it's easier to spell. <laughs> okay. Um, so there we go. Now, if I come down here and right click here, you go, oh, that's bogus. It still has the same names. 
or does it? Let's see. I know that over here, in my little tiny guy, there's a thing here where I can click. Now it should be angle, not clip name. So here's the rub, and I'm kind of, you know, uh, screwing up here on purpose. I happen to know that this pop up menu only works if you've changed the angle or the camera name here before you make the multicam clip. So here's okay. what we're going to do. We're going to delete this multicam clip, move to trash, and it's going to say can't do it. The reason it can't do it is it's actually used in a timeline, so I'm going to delete it from there, and then I'm going to delete this. Luckily, this didn't take that long to make. Move to trash. Background task or rendering. Another gotcha. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to click OK. Background task. What's it doing? Well, here it is. Background task, command 9. Basically, what it's doing is it's transcoding all my footage because I told it to do that uh, in the default setting. And again, we're squirreling down create optimized media was actually clicked for the import tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. I'm going to stop that rather. Come over here and now I can move this to the trash. You're going, but that's your multicam clip. Oh, more basket. I'm sorry, more background tasks are rendering happening. What is happening? Cancel. There we go. And now I should be able to move that to trash. Okay. So now that I've actually named these camera names, when I make my multicam again, new multicam clip, and I'm going to call it uh, Red Rock, what it's going to do now is it's actually going to take that camera name or that angle name into the multicam, uh, multicam data. Again, it takes about 20 seconds. Take this guy, drag it down here. Still black. I see my five angles here. Okay, but when I right click here, active video angle, side, steady cam, close up wide. Now, logically, they don't make sense because I don't really want the audio to be number one because I really what I'd rather do is use instead of a nine up, what I'd rather do is use a four up and just have my four angles here. Here's page one of my four angles and here's page two of my four angles. So here's a trick. If I take in my bin here and I double click on this guy, I get uh, I get this guy and basically what I get to do here is see down here I get to see all the angles clone how do I close that probably like that there we go and the order here top to bottom is the order here one two three four so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my audio and just drag that down to the bottom I think that does it yeah and then what I'd like to do is go uh, I'd like to have them be ordered wide, close up, uh, steady cam side. Now, actually, I think I want side steady cam, which actually goes against the way the cameras were lettered, but whatever. Um, so there we go. Wide, close up, side, steady cam. Okay. Now, when I uh, hit this little arrow here, I will go back to my actual clip. Now, now we can start actually editing. But let's take a look. So now, these little guys, these little guys here, are, are telling me what I'm going to edit when I switch. Now, I really want to only edit the video, but right now I have to make sure that the audio. Okay, so the audio is on this angle, which is the good audio. The video now will only switch between these guys. One, two, three, four, okay. or one, two, three, four, using my keyboard. So at this point, I can actually scrub through past the slate. You can probably hear the fan on my little laptop kicking in. So if I were to, I don't know, what I, I'm not really going to edit this because Shane didn't actually tell me I could play all this stuff, but he did say I could use some of his footage. Um, so now if I hit play, so if you had this. At this point, I can cut between my cameras. Camera one, ready two, take. I'm just using my keyboard now. One, two, three, four on my keyboard. Three, ready one, take one. Now, you'll notice it's not playing back well. There's a couple reasons why it's not playing back well. One is because I'm making a screen capture at the same time here. Two is that it really just doesn't play back well. Now, the faster the drive, the better it plays back. Um, 
am stopping now. Um, but here's something that's really important. What doesn't happen is that the audio doesn't get messed up. Even if you're cutting music, when I cut the music video I did a couple weeks ago, I did this with 20 camera angles on a um, Thunderbolt Raid, a Promise Raid, and the audio played perfect. All my cuts happened right on the beat. And you see now I have my name and time code. I think I can turn off the time code. Yeah, I can go like this because I really don't need time code on 5D footage. And now when I play back here, you notice it's still, that's playing pretty good. Here's an important thing you want to learn. Command, Shift, 7, which is the keyboard shortcut for show and hide the angle viewer. Because when the angle viewer is off, this will play much better. So I don't want to start on that angle. So I right click on here. Let's go to the close up. Okay, so when I zoom in here, I can actually take this, um, this shot here, when I cut to this close up, and I can use all my edit tricks that I use in Final Cut 10, and I can roll edits and slip edits and I pick it up where his hand goes to it. And actually, um, what I don't want, I want to actually continue on that shot. Now I'm going to show you one more little trick here. And this is I didn't want to necessarily get into this yet. Now one uh, here's a Final Cut 10 thing. I can't. Um, what's it called in in seven? Um, the where the, you get the little red nipples and you want to just blend that across. <clears throat> what I really want to do is I want to make this shot last this length without changing my timing. Uh, here's a cool trick. Command Option Up Arrow drag this out to here to the snap point and then command option uh, select it again command option down arrow and then I can delete that so now that one shot lasts and there's the tilt up and that's how uh, and that's it now at that point you can just you can uh, work your timeline as much as you want you can pull out time whatever you want but that's those are some sort of beginning gotchas on the multicam editor. Oh, um, did I show you now? So when I come down here, I can right click on this and say, yeah, I don't want to be on the close up here. I want to be on the steady cam shot. And then you go. Oh, <laughs> there was two steady cam shots in a row. Um, but anyway, that's how you can use the camera angles. Uh, the camera angle, uh, what is it called here? Yeah, the camera name as a tag, so it makes it easier to use active video angle right here. All right, that's some uh, Final Cut 10 multicam stuff. Uh, if you like this, I'll do some more. Later.